Recognizing Cowichan Valley. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. I just want to speak very briefly in support of the hoist motion by my colleague from Saanich North in the Islands. What my colleague is asking for in moving this amendment is that we step back from this contradictory pathway that government is contemplating. A new expanding fossil fuel industry is not the future that our province should be leaning into. The challenges in front of us demand that we pursue a different course of action and the opportunities to incentivize it. Choosing to take action on climate change is no longer a luxury that we can uh, afford to let go by. We are already seeing the impacts in every community across the province, and LNG only brings two conjoined challenges. It contributes to climate change that is placing such a cost on our province, and it forces our communities to become tied to an industry whose light is fading. We see the challenges Alberta is having charting a path forward to a sustainable economy. I don't envy that challenge. Communities throughout that province are deeply tied to fossil fuel development, so much so that change is resisted everywhere. People want to know that they will have employment that gives their lives purpose and an income that lets them support their family and their children. When we are so far ahead and we have an alternative right in front of us with Clean BC, why would we want to tie our communities to this development? We know it is finite. We know it's not going to last. We know it is a boom and bust economy. We know the fluctuations that natural gas prices have gone through. There is no security in this path. Imagine instead that we, ha we create the Institute, the Pacific Northwest Institute for Renewable Energy in Terrace, BC. Imagine that we invite the greatest minds in renewable energy to come to BC and to be the innovators and the leaders to take us, not only in this province, to a zero carbon economy, but the rest of the world. And we lead that way. Imagine that vision for our province. Let's choose a different path, one with untold benefits. We aren't simply fighting climate change because we have to. Truly embracing a vision for our province of a sustainable, healthy future allows us to address other issues as well. While we reshape our energy systems, we can reshape our communities in ways that help us to live better. Transportation that incorporates more multimodal ways of getting around, economies that focus on local food, local manufacturing, and local benefits going straight back into that community. Ensuring every British Columbian has conditions to live a healthy, fulfilling life in a flourishing, supportive environment should be one of government's most important responsibilities. There is a bright future for BC, but we only set ourselves back when we insist on doing what we've always done by giving tax credits and incentives to the fossil fuel industry. My colleagues and I have been clear we will not support an expansion of taxpayer-funded giveaways to help support a large fossil fuel industry and we will not help the government pursue a pathway that we fundamentally believe is wrong. We are focused on seeing BC seize the extraordinary opportunity it has in front of it to build a sustainable economy and a new vision for communities across this province. 